In this video I'm going to show you how I make a forecast in F5. Now I use the F5 software almost exclusively when I'm creating a severe weather forecast. Uh, so I'm just going to go through the steps of what I like to, use, to look at, how I use the software, and we'll see what we can come up with. Now one really nice feature about this, and uh, this is about the F5 data feed itself, is that the forecast data comes out and is available for every three hours. Uh, that means that, you know, compared to a lot of websites that have forecast data available for 18Z and 0Z, we also have data available for 21Z, which is pretty crucial when you're doing a severe weather forecast to have data, uh, forecast data for 4 p.m. So that's what I'm going to do in my examples. I'm going to look at the NAMWERF 21 hour forecast, which should be valid at 21Z tomorrow. This is a real situation here. I'm just going to go through the steps and see what happens. This will be valid for uh, Tuesday, April 28th, 2009, if you want to go back and uh, look at the SPC uh, storm events and see how I do with my forecast. First thing I, I like to look at is just the dew point. We'll just double click surface dew point and get an idea of what kind of moisture we've got out there. Now I've already got the data contoured so that uh, 55 and greater is green and that's generally what I'm going to be looking at uh, for severe weather. Now let's take a look at our sea level pressure and see what kind of lows we might have out there. You can see there's a lot of high pressure out here so if anything we're going to be looking at something off into the Rockies or somewhere along the high plains. Again, if we go back to surface dew points, we'll see that the only area that really gets any kind of uh, substantial moisture is going to be down here in southeastern New Mexico and west Texas. So given the, that the low is off to the west and our moisture is confined down to this area, I'm going to zoom in down uh, to west Texas and uh, eastern New Mexico for further investigation. Let's take a look at the 850 dew points. Uh, besides having good moisture at the surface, you, want to want, you also want to make sure that you've got uh, decent moisture just above the surface. And you really do. You've got a ton of moisture here, actually, uh, in this part of the country. So this is starting to look a little interesting down here in West Texas and Eastern New Mexico. Next thing I'm going to look at is surface-based cape. Uh, this time of year, I'm going to be wanting at least you know 500 to 1,000 joules of cape. Uh, and as you can see, this is 500, uh, over 500, and this is 1,000 in the green. So this isn't a lot of instability, but it's possibly enough. Uh, so now we're starting to look at this area. Now let's overlay our sea level, I'm sorry, our surface wind barbs. Uh, again, to overlay, I put it in multi-map mode and so that I have my instability and wind barbs on one map. You can see there's a wind direction shift here. We got southerly winds right here and then more easterly along in here. So it seems like we've got uh, a bit of a boundary down here in far west Texas and then uh, up into southern New Mexico. Now something to keep in mind too is that you've got an upsloping pattern going on here from uh, from the Texas Panhandle, or Central Texas Panhandle on south, winds are blowing to the west from the east, and that's going up into higher terrain. So you're getting some orographic lift. Uh, and that, that actually is a very important feature because uh, you really don't need much to get storms going in this part of the country when you get some upsloping. Uh, in that situation, I would just be interested in some good surface dew points, easterly winds, and maybe some 500 millibar uh, winds that are substantial, say 30 knots or better. So again, instability is important, but I'm going to be looking more at the moisture and the winds at uh, the mid-levels. So let's shut off our, let's keep this turned on for multi-map. Let's shut off our surface-based cape and now let's overlay the, the uh, surface dew points one more time. 
And again, we're down in this area where the highest instability was. And let's zoom in a little more because now I'm, I'm really defining my area of interest. Again, we got easterly winds from here on south. Uh, and we got a, a boundary in this area. So the area I'm interested in is going to be in here. We got convergence along the, uh, the eastern slope of the mountains, which is not really anything new, but we have upsloping along the Cap Rock and uh, into the uh, southeastern part of New Mexico. And we got great moisture just above the surface. So that's not an issue at all. Uh, let's just go through a few more maps here. Let's look at the 500 millibar wind speed and see if we got some, some, some substantial winds in the mid-levels to support storms. Now, I forgot to shut off uh, my surface dew point, so I'm going to do that now. And you can see we got uh, values contoured at 30 or greater. Let me zoom out here so you get some perspective. Uh, again, with this map, I have it set to contour 30 or greater. And we've got, we've got good winds here in the mid-levels for uh, sustaining a severe storm, I think. Uh, we got good moisture at the surface and good moisture just above the surface. Let's take a look at the cap. I've got an index called APRWX cap that takes into consideration the temperatures at 850 millibars, 700 millibars, looks at it at specific heights of the atmosphere, uh, looks at, uh, now let's see, I forgot to shut off my winds now. We'll do that. Looks at uh, values uh, of SIN, ML SIN, surface based SIN, looks at all kinds of capping parameters and combines them into one. And essentially, uh, the areas that don't have shading on this map are uncapped. Areas that do have shading are capped. Uh, here we've got a hole where the cap is eroded, and then all up in this area the cap is gone. Uh, this is a very small hole, so uh, I'd be a little less inclined to believe that the cap would erode there. Up in this area, uh, eastern New Mexico, uh, the cap is probably a little bit more believably broken. Also the upsloping here, uh, these two wind barbs have greater upsloping than this one does, and certainly than further north, so I'm starting to think about this area right in here of eastern New Mexico. If I put on my cities, and then zoom in a bit, I can see that the, the area I'm interested in would be from uh, Roswell and Lovington to Portales and Clovis. So that's kind of the area that I'm looking at. Somewhere between Clovis and Hobbs. If we take a look at the precipitation output by the model, you can see there's some precip out here. Uh, again, there's some right along the eastern part of, uh, or southeastern part of New Mexico, West Texas border. Uh, that's more favorable than the area to the south where there's no precip. Uh, I think if there's going to be severe storms, this is going to be the area to look at. If I take a look at uh, my severe index, which is essentially my conceptual model put into an index, you'll see it basically outlines the same area. Uh, it's a little more aggressive on the severe weather, but it shows it all through here. Uh, right, pretty much right in the center of where it's spinning out is where I would probably go if I was storm chasing. 